Ciao, finish. Anyone that follows, teaches, or believes this whole notion of being slain in the spirit, you cannot be taken seriously. As a matter of fact, if you teach this, then it is clear you are a liar. You are not genuine. It's doubtful that you are saved. If you are, you are not a very good Christian. You're certainly not a very smart Christian. How about that term? You are not someone that reads the scriptures or take the serious the scriptures serious. As a matter of fact, you are more interested in promoting some sort of uh, carnival style uh, entertainment show than you are about entertaining the things of God. You are not of God. What about this is even remotely biblical? Find one example in this. As a matter of fact, here's how you know what they're after. Look what they're doing. If this actually is a legitimate move of the spirit, what are they doing? They're interested in sending people around, different people around, recording it. Now, we're going to look in a little bit at their examples they think are examples of someone being slain in the spirit. And let's just be honest, let's be clear, there are none. Now, we export and import a lot of different things. I'm not sure if we are the ones that are importing this foolish notion of being slain in the spirit or we're the one that actually originally exported. But this is happening all over the country, all over the globe. And you see this not just with uh, Western society, but also other societies. You see this in uh, Asian societies, where it be uh, somewhere in India or someplace like that. And it's the same foolishness, this sweeping and this people at this mass, the, a mass amount of people being slain. And what is key, what is crucial to everyone being slain in the spirit is someone with a microphone, clearly, because they've got to blow into the microphone and some sort of little hand gestures. If it's really the Holy Spirit, why do you need a microphone? Why do you need the hand gestures? Why do you need to make these sounds as though you're trying to provide sound effects? Why? Because it's a show. Who needs sound effects? Someone that's putting on a show. Now, this one here, I have no idea what's going on. It looks like they are practicing on each other. There's a line of people going forward, different people to practice on other people. And I guess, I don't know if this is in, 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 in Mexico or someplace in, in South America. I'm not sure. E vai, com autoridade. Chega perto, não empurra. Isso. Vai, vai, toma vez, não espera. Isso, 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 isso. A última lá tá com a cabeça bem baixa, mas deu também. Vamos aplaudir o Senhor. What is this? Uh, who knows? It's not biblical, it's not godly, which makes it the definition of unbiblical and very much so ungodly. But let's look at the examples that they want to bring up to say that here are examples of someone in the Bible being slain in the spirit. Now, no true scholar or even a true student of the Bible would actually accept these, but let's look at a couple of them. John 18, 5, when Jesus is in the garden and they're coming to arrest him, he says, 18, 5, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth, when he asked, who do you seek? And he said to them, I am he, and Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with him. So when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Now, we don't know what caused them to fall to the ground. Maybe they were all close, cut up together, or maybe, maybe it was the power of the Spirit. Clearly, though, whatever it was, these were people who did not have the Holy Spirit in them. These were people who were not believers. They were not on their way to heaven. Clearly, we know that. And so this could not be an example of someone being slain in the Spirit. They would even go to Paul and say that Paul, you know, the one who says that one of the results of having the spirit, the gifts of the spirit, I mean, the fruit of the spirit is self-control. But Paul apparently left, lost control. Here it is in Acts 26, 13. At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven. He's given his testimony brighter than the sun shining all around me and those who were journeying with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in Hebrew dialect, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the ghost. And I said, who are you? Now, understand what's happening here. Paul, in this case, is one, uh, coherent. He understands what's happening. But in this case, Paul has fallen on his face. Paul is showing reverence and awe, uh, knowing that he's in the presence of someone mighty. And he and he falls before him uh, in a reverent state and calling him Lord. So this is not someone being slain in the spirit. As a matter of fact, Paul doesn't have the spirit at that moment in time. And so again, another poor example, that's not an example, but let's go to the Old Testament. In Ezekiel, 
128. And as the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice speaking. So what you keep seeing is people who are falling, bowing over before the Lord, uh, prostrate or in a reverent stance. People are wanting to take that now because they can't find any examples in the Bible of someone being slain in the spirit. They want to take that, someone bowing over either prostrate or praying or what have you, or in adoration or what have you. They want to take that and say that that is someone being slain in the spirit. But we see these examples that we've seen or in other churches, we don't, we see people who are losing control and going the opposite way. They're not bowing over, bending over in prayer and adoration, which we all can do that. Uh, they want to keep supplanting this and calling it something that it is not. Or well, what about Daniel? Daniel 10, 7. Now I, Daniel alone, saw the vision while the men who were with me did not see the vision. Nevertheless, a great dread fell on them and they ran away to hide themselves. So I was left alone and saw this great vision. So here we see uh, this vision coming before Daniel. And notice what happens. One of the men ran away that was with him. But then Daniel himself says in verse 9, but I heard the sound of his words. And as soon as I heard the sound of his words, I fell into a deep sleep on my face with my face on the ground. Well, he's understanding what's happening. Is Daniel being slain in the spirit? Well, first of all, we don't know that the spirit has overcome him, but he falls in a deep sleep. Uh, this is not being slain in the spirit. This is, again, him being seeing a vision and being spoken to by an angel. Now, the issue is, who is this before Daniel? Well, this is an angel. So now is Daniel being slain in the angel, slain in the spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. It's an angel coming before him, and he's being put into this sleep, and he's been spoken to, being explained to him what has happened about his prayers. And so when people want to look for something, they have to kind of stretch the imagination, say, well, here's an example. Here's an example. Anyone that is sleep or anyone that's in a vision or anyone that's bowed over, let's try to make that fit since we don't have any real biblical examples. This never happens in the New Testament. As the Holy Spirit is being given to the church, no one has this happen to them. And so for any teacher, preacher, pastor who's saying this, ladies and gentlemen, harsh words they are, but they're true. These people are liars. They are deceptive. They are causing you who foolishly, if you believe this, who foolishly follow these things. And it makes you wonder if you'll follow that, what else will you follow? Well, we see what else you'll follow because we see other people following all sorts of things because the Bible is not important. They'd rather be a part of a show than be part of the true spirit. Ah!